Hi, my name is Bianca Anderson, and I'm a communication studies here at CSU Chico. I'm also involved with the speech and debate team and am nationally qualified with impromptu speaking, which is what I'm talking to you about today. So specifically today, we're going to be going over how to prep a note card for impromptu, ways that you can prep outside of your classroom since it is part of your final as a communication studies class, and finally, give you an example of an impromptu speech. Imagine that this is your note card. I recommend before coming into your impromptu final that you do have some of your note card prepped out, specifically everything that I already have up here. So we're gonna start with the introduction. We have our attention getter, our thesis, and our preview of points. The attention getter can be any sort of outside source outside of the quotation in order to grab your audience's attention and make them want to listen to what you have to say. This can be a story, a narrative, a, a joke, Really anything that you think is going to be able to make your audience want to listen to what you have to say. Within an impromptu speech, your thesis is essentially you either agreeing or disagreeing with the quotation. And it's as simple as a statement as that. I agree with this quotation or I disagree with this quotation. And then after that, you can interpret the quotation so that your audience knows exactly what you're agreeing or disagreeing with. And then next, you just preview what points you're going to use in order to convince your audience that your interpretation is either correct or incorrect. So then we have the three points. And these can be anything from a pop cultural reference, a song, something that's happening in the news. It can be a historic reference. Essentially, especially as a college student, you can just pull from any of the other courses that you're taking. It can be a theory, a concept, um, something your professor said in class one day that you thought was funny and you did a little extra research on. It can be anything that's going to be able to get your point across to the audience that your interpretation of the quotation is correct. And in between each point, we have our transitions, which sometimes we forget to do. So if you think that you're gonna be one of those people that is gonna forget your transition, just put a little arrow in between each, because um, you don't need to have a transition from your introduction to your first main point. It's just from your first main point to the second, and then from the second to the third. And so you can just write in there, transition. And transitions in, in this context, it doesn't have to be as flushed out as a transition would be, say, for a platform speech. So it can really just be, I just talked about this, and now I'm going to talk about this. If you want to make it something funny or a little bit better than that, then you totally can, but there's no pressure on that. Now, into our conclusion, you're just going to be restating the points that you just gave, going back over your thesis statement, so again telling us like what the quotation was, what it means, and how you were able to prove it either true or false. And then we have a creative conclusion, which should, if it's doing what it's supposed to be doing, tie us right back up to our attention getter. And so if you started telling a story, your attention getter, you should finish that story with your creative conclusion kind of tying up your speech into a beautiful package. Annie Smith is a woman living in Los Angeles who is having the problem of her neighborhood dogs using her yard as a public toilet. So she posted a sign in her yard saying that she would find these irresponsible pet owners and personally defecate on their lawns and on the windshield of their cars. Now when I received the quotation today, and I knew exactly what to do, but in a much more real sense, I had no idea what to do by Michael Scott from The Office. I found this to be fundamentally true. Now what I believe this to mean is that if we believe in ourselves and go with our gut instinct, we can accomplish almost anything. And today I want to look at this through three different lenses of analysis. First, through Emma Watson, next through sex education, and finally, a feminist punk rock group. So Emma Watson is an extremely successful actress, but what a lot of people don't know about her is her involvement within the women's rights movement. She's done a number of things for young women in other countries as well as here in America. However, she didn't really have any qualifications for this job. She was best known for being an actress. However, relating us back to the quotation today, she just saw something that was going wrong, and although she might not have really known exactly what she was doing, she was still able to accomplish so many goals with the He For She campaign. 
So now that we've talked about girl crush Emma Watson, let's move on to something even more sexy, sex education within our public high schools. So John Oliver was able to open the door in order to let people know how awful sex education within the United States really is. By creating his own sex ed video featuring different actors and actresses. Now this relates us to our quotation today because obviously John Oliver is not a healthcare professional. This was not his job to do this, but he saw something that was going wrong and decided to open the door for other people in order to understand that this is a real problem. So now that we've talked about sex ed, let's talk about Pussy Riot. Pussy Riot is a feminist punk rock band out of Russia that was put into jail by Putin by going into a church and singing their songs which have themes of feminism as well as anti-Putin rhetoric. So Pussy Riot knew exactly what to do which was to get everybody's attention. However, being put into jail may seem like their goals were hindered. However, by being put into jail, they were able to get the word out more about what they were looking for and trying to accomplish, as well as when they were taken out of jail, they started being able to have their political campaign spread to the rest of the world. So today, we went over three things proving the quotation, and I knew exactly what to do, but in a much more real sense, I had no idea what to do by Michael Scott to be fundamentally true by looking at Emma Watson, Sex Ed, and Pussy Riot. So whether you're like one of these three examples, or maybe you're like Annie, and you might just have to poop in someone's yard to get things done. I hope after watching this video that you have a better understanding of what is expected of you for your impromptu final in CMST 131. So as you can see in my speech, I didn't use any citations. It was just examples from political news or from pop culture that you're using in order to tell your audience why they should be agreeing or disagreeing with the quotation. So while you're binge watching and procrastinating your other finals, you can actually be studying for your impromptu final by watching an additional episode of The Office or continuing to watch Moana on repeat. So with that in mind, good luck with your finals and good luck on your final in CMST 131.